Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here today, my name's Austin Wynn. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Illinois College of Medicine, and I make helpful videos along my journey through med school and just things I find to be helpful to all of you. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to bring videos whenever I can, and just like I said, bring the most real advice to all of you and help you all uh, throughout this tough process. So today's video, if you clicked on it, you must be looking for the best way to prepare for USMLE step two, and that's exactly what you're gonna get. In today's video, I'm gonna break down step two study into a pre-dedicated phase and a dedicated phase, and just give you my recommendations, what I think worked for me, and hopefully this will give you the right tools and resources to go through your M3 year with confidence, know exactly what you're gonna do in pre-dedicated, and then dedicated once you have that time to really prepare for step two. So to give a little background about what I did in my pre-dedicated is basically just Anki the whole time, and you world. So in the pre-dedicated period, you really want to just learn as much as you can, be immersed in a clinical setting, ask questions, and really just see everything. Because when you see it, you know, you remember things easier and that'll make step two so much better. So the trick question is you want what pre-dedicated is. Pre-dedicated is literally all the time before dedicated. So basically your entire third year is considered pre-dedicated. And if you're using Anki, you really have to keep the cards going. If you're not keeping the cards going, then you shouldn't even be using Anki because you're really not using it the right way. You know, long-term memory retention, space repetition is all about, you know, consistency and using it for a period of time. So in the same way as like you study for step one, if you used Anki, you should be continuing that way in step two. If you want to know the nitty gritty details of how to do that for every rotation, how to honor your rotations, make sure you check out my videos on how to study for every rotation. I've made videos for all of those. I'll link them up here and you know, I honored every rotation in medical school because of this strategy, I think. So I mean, that studying, you know, really works out, really helps. So make sure you check those videos out. Basically in the pre-dedicated period, I was doing Anki and then you wrote questions for every single block. And then when I got to my last block of uh, rotations, which was six weeks of pediatrics, I reset my U world. So I never did the PEDS question until I reset. So technically throughout the bank, it was like my second pass of everything else, but my first pass for pediatrics. I promise you the test is mostly medicine and then like surgery, but still like 60% medicine. So if you did like medicine early on your M3 year and then now you're on your last rotation, you're not going to remember any of those questions. I did internal medicine first and then surgery third and literally during PEDS when I reset the bank, I just started doing like pediatrics questions, surgery and medicine blocks all mixed and I was starting to do like one to two blocks a day during those six weeks of dedicated because there's 4,000 questions in UWorld so you really have to start working through it or else you're not going to finish in time. So throughout the rotation, I was like learning a lot of peds, obviously, because I was on that rotation, but also like refreshing myself on medicine and surgery. And honestly, like relearning a lot of the medicine was helpful during peds too, because a lot of it overlaps uh, here and there. So that was good for me. So basically I was in that soft dedicated period. And that's honestly what I would recommend for all of you too. It's really hard to kind of crunch all of you world step two in a shorter dedicated time because people mostly take like somewhere between two to four weeks for step two. I only took two and a half weeks. So the way my schedule worked with ortho aways is that like I had to get this test done and get it done fast early and do well because I didn't have time to spare. You know, I have all these away auditions and you know, there's really no step two stuff really in ortho. I need to erase that stuff from my mind and learn ortho. So this was kind of my schedule, but I honestly think it was really good. I would recommend starting your U world again in that last block and just doing what I said, reset the bank, do whatever your last block is with like medicine combined so you get through some of those questions. And then once you finish that last rotation and take that shelf exam, now you're in like full dedicated mode and we can kind of talk about what that looks like. So during your dedicated period now, this is when things get a little bit more intense. So like I mentioned, I took two and a half weeks and you're still doing Anki throughout this time period, but the big difference is you're really focusing on your Anki deck for Q banks. So when you get 
question is wrong and you wrote, I can't stress this enough, but you really should be making an Anki card. This is your form of taking notes and putting that information that you got wrong in space repetition. You know yourself the best, so when you get something wrong, you can sort of pinpoint like, why did I get this wrong? Is it because I didn't understand this flashcard? Did I not know this concept at all or what's going on? And then it's up to you to make flashcards on you were about like what was missing, what's the missing piece for why you got this question wrong. So once you do that, you're going to have a QBanks deck and keep that in space repetition. So throughout your dedicated and just like during the whole year when you're using Anki, honestly, you're basically reinforcing your missed questions with more flashcards. And that's like the best way to keep all the information straight. So that's big. So I recommend doing that. And also when you're doing Euro, you really want to focus on all the flow charts, the algorithms and the tables that show up on the description. So when you see those descriptions, don't just scroll right through them. Make sure you really read those differential diagnoses clearly, focus on the educational objectives and learn all the concepts. Like I'm a firm believer if you know you are really well, you're going to be in really good shape for this exam. Now during dedicated, like I said, in pre-dedicated, I was doing like about two blocks a day during pediatrics, but during dedicated, I can't stress enough that like question repetition, like getting those reps in, that's going to be just big time for you on test day. And I honestly would do like four blocks a day. Like I did four blocks a day for basically two weeks. And then some days I even did five if I had time, just because like you want to really get through as many questions as possible. I think even in a short period of time, like seeing all the concepts so fresh before your exam is super helpful. And it just builds endurance because you're taking an exam that's gonna be eight blocks. Like that's a really long day. So if you can do four blocks every single day leading up to that, you're gonna be in such good shape for this test. So I think the trick is like, remember, every block should only take you an hour. So you have to be really efficient with your reviewing time. And some people finish blocks earlier. You finish in 50 minutes, then you save time just there. But the way I would block out my calendars, I would actually only leave about an hour and a half for every block. And that includes the take it and review it. Sometimes it would take like an hour and 45 minutes and I would like adjust for that in my schedule. But generally you want to be really efficient when you review things. So. I think when you're doing Euro blocks, this is how I like to do it, and feel free to not do this, but I think it's really helpful to make reviewing blocks more efficient. When you're taking your test, you should mark questions that you're unsure of, because those are questions that you really should review, and then ones you don't mark, that means you know it really, really well, like you know for sure 100% it's this answer. So when you get your test result back or whatever from your blocks, you'll see which ones you got wrong, and most of the times the ones you get wrong should be the ones you mark, and other times it might not be, and that's fine too. That just means that you had a fatal flaw. You thought you knew something super well, didn't mark it, but then you made a mistake and got it wrong. So when you're reviewing your block, you should review all the ones you got wrong first, then all the ones you marked after that. And those ones you're reviewing really thoroughly, like going through those algorithms, reading the education objective, reading all the incorrect answers. Then the ones you got right now that you didn't even mark, if you know it so well, it's a concept you're not going to forget. You just got it right that day. There's no need to like spend all that time on that question. You should just scroll through it, make sure everything makes sense, it's what you thought, and then just skim through the education objective and move on. That's how you review things efficiently. And if you're going to do four blocks a day, it starts getting a lot quicker. You know, I was still working out and spending time with family and friends and my girlfriends. So like it was definitely doable. I know it sounds like a lot, but you really have to build your way up to it. But that's kind of what dedicated is. You know, those days you're just really doing a lot of questions. And then I would recommend doing five practice exams. Try to fit it in your schedule, maybe two a week is what I did. I did two a week the first week two a week, the second week, and then the last week I did the last practice exam, which is the free 120. And the order I would really recommend is actually starting with UWorld 1. UWorld 1 has an extremely harsh curve. It's not a great test in my opinion, but it will light a fire under your butt and it'll get you working and it's a good motivating thing and it's a good score to start with. So take UWorld 1 first. Next exam I'd recommend is NBME 10. It's a good exam, pretty fair. Some questions I think are a little easier than what you might see on test day, but it's just good to get into that repetition. It's 200 questions, so it's a, it's a good test to really build endurance and to get a score so you kind of know where you're at. NBME, I would take NBME 11 next, it's another NBME, which I thought NBME 11 was one of the most representative of test day. And then I would take UWRO 2. UWRO 2 was a really good exam. I thought it was a little bit easier than what the real exam felt like, but it gives you a good three-digit score. You can kind of gauge where you're at. And then finally, the free 120, which is 
Again, this is written by the test taker. You have to take the free 120 if you, if you take any practice exam because there's literally some practice questions on the free 120 that's nearly word for word repeated on the exam. So you have to take the free 120. But of all those exams, remember, don't put too much pressure or emphasis on the three digit scores. They're, they've been proven like shown on Reddit tables and graphs to not be like the most predictive or representative, like with a pretty average to low correlation coefficient, not considered a strong correlation. I think the best one was like 0.6, so that's not like great. Um, but I would say shoot for like percentages. Like I would recommend for you 250 plus scores, try to aim for like 70 to 75% on all your practice exams. And for your 260 plus scores, shoot for 80 to 85%. And no matter what the three digit score is on those tests, you'll still feel like you're in a good spot to be where you want to be. Uh, the other exams I would recommend are AMBOSS exam. I didn't take it myself, but I've heard some good things about it. I just didn't have the time to take it. The other NBME is NBME 9, which is honestly a pretty bad exam from what I've heard. And it's just not really predictive. It kind of freaks people out. And I didn't really want to shell out another $60 to take NBME 9 when I knew it was like a bad test. So I just opted to not take it. Uh, feel free to do whatever you want with that information, but that's my recommendation. Um, and finally, some things I'd recommend in your dedicated period. People love the Divine Intervention podcast, but to be honest, he talks very slow and I feel like it's very unorganized the way he just kind of rambles off facts and ideas. So it wasn't really a good use of time for me. So I didn't really listen to him. I listened to one or two podcasts and I was like, all right, this is not for me. And then I found a high yield like note sheet of all his like podcasts. I'll link it in the description, but I'd recommend actually just like going through some of those ones and just getting an idea of what some of those concepts look like because they are pretty high yield concept. And I was looking mostly at like the risk factor section, social sciences, military questions and things like that so i'd recommend checking that out and i'll link it again in the description like i said uh, the other thing i'd recommend uh, leading up to the exam is to really look at the distribution of the test everything is listed online they tell you it's going to be 318 questions they tell you what to expect the percentages that you know the highest percentage of this test i didn't know and so i looked at this was actually social sciences and that's what it felt like on test day there's a lot of like ethics, social sciences, quality improvement, quality health, that kind of stuff you really have to focus on. It's all fair game. So I'm gonna link both of these links in the description, but let me show you really quick on my computer so you can kind of see the distribution of the test to help you prepare better. All right, so I talked about these links a little bit more in my you know, what to expect on test day video when I kind of outlined how I felt immediately after the exam. But I really recommend looking at this the week before your exam or the days leading up to it they clearly tell you that there will be you know, no more than 318 questions. So you'll have two blocks that are around 38 questions and six blocks that are 40. There are eight one hour blocks as expected. And the big thing is looking at the content outline down here. Like they tell you what the breakdown is gonna be. So this is super helpful. It's like when your college professor gives you the breakdown of the exam the day before. So a lot of people don't look at this stuff. So it's really important to see that everything is less than 10% mostly, except for like social sciences and ethics. So this is something that's really high yield actually. And people don't spend a lot of time studying it. It's considered like low yield, I guess, in a lot of resources because everyone's just focusing on all of this up here. So I'd really recommend really nailing in on these two sections. I mean, this is 20% of the test. It's a fifth of the questions. Finally, the physician tasks and competencies. This is super high yield because it shows you that there's really not that many questions that are just, hey, what's the diagnosis? Like the first order style questions. A lot of them are these really hard, what's the best next step in management? What's the best clinical decision-making step here? How are you going to prevent this disease? What's the best outcome or most common outcome of this uh, uh, medication or disease what's the prognosis in this patient with all these risk factors you know professionalism patient safety practice-based learning these are things that you really have to know well and that comes with doing a lot of practice questions and just really preparing for the exam and knowing what they're going to test you on so this other link up here is a USMLE content outline which I got also from this site from here and basically this shows you all the topics they can test you on literally everything they pull questions from is from here. And this is something like I said in my other video, I wish I spent more time looking at. I mean, look at all these quality improvement measures and projects. Like 
I didn't know half of this stuff, I feel like. And maybe I'm gonna get lucky <laughs> from my test because like I don't think I saw too much, but there's quite a bit that will come up and it's all fair game on here. So you really have to take a look at this stuff and know it well. So this is pretty much everything and they go into a lot of the different disorders. So I'd really recommend like just skimming through this and making sure you're uh, well equipped for all this information on test day. All right, everyone. So overall, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. I hope this video was helpful. And I want to leave you with this statement. It's that the first day you start studying for step two is the first day of your M3 clerkships. So really get into Anki if you can. Keep the cards going throughout the year. I know it's so busy, but it's going to make a world of a difference for you. And you get to dedicate and you have all this information in front of you. So do your best. Keep doing Anki. Make new flashcards for questions you get wrong in your world. And just know those concepts on the outline really well, especially those social science questions. Uh, overall, I think focusing on the you know, flow charts, tables, and differentials would be the most helpful thing on UWorld. And really know your core foundational concepts well, like heart failure, COPD, and asthma. Know how to analyze pulmonary function tests. Uh, know your shock parameters, what to do with like blunt abdominal trauma and penetrating abdominal trauma. You need to know those algorithms like super well. And then you can spend less time on like really lower yield neuro and ophthalmology. Like that stuff doesn't come up as much and you can see on the distribution, the high yield stuff you need to know. So like I said before, if any of you has questions on anything that I mentioned in this video, just comment below. I'll put all the links of everything I mentioned in the comments as well. Um, and then I hope you all have a wonderful day. You're gonna crush it and I'm wishing you all the best. Take care.